Welcome to Xi'an for the final day of the Olympic qualifying tournament in China. Day three starts with New Zealand taking on France and Julia Montesano and Laurie Chiswick are here to take you through the action. And Laurie, both teams will want to go out on a high note today. Well, they certainly will, Julia, and especially France. France are going to want to go 3-0 uh, and zero at this qualifying tournament just to show the other teams in the world that they have earned their spot at the Paris Olympics and they're not there just because they're the host nation. Absolutely. Well, this is the penultimate game of the tournament with China and Puerto Rico concluding the tournament after this and with France with France and Puerto Rico winning last night it means France China and Puerto Rico have all booked their tickets to the Paris Olympics in July New Zealand has unfortunately missed out but a win today will still be important for their confidence no doubt it's time to now welcome the French team onto the French team onto the floor here in Xi'an and Laurie I've been super impressed by just how hard they've come out and played this tournament they had already qualified going in but to win both games and to win them convincingly so far is a real credit to them oh absolutely they have been playing great team basketball which is really reflected in the assist column where they average 20 through assist, 24 assists per game they are really sharing the ball around and looking for great shots but what I've been really impressed with is their defensive intensity and relentlessness. They held China to 50 points, which is quite phenomenal. And I think they'll continue that approach today. I agree. I think they're a very strong team and they're definitely one to watch come the Paris Olympics in July, especially with the tag as the host nation. And there's head coach jean Amé Tupin. And now bronze medalist in the Eurobasket 2023 Zhang. edition, hoping for more success at the Olympics. We now turn our attention to New Zealand. We knew it would be a tough tournament for them, and it was no tougher than last night going down to Puerto Rico by just two points. Laurie, there will be a lot of sore bodies out there today. Oh, my goodness. Some players played some big minutes last night in that do-or-die game against Puerto Rico. Stella Beck, Ezra McGoldrick really played almost the whole 40 minutes. Plus the fact that they played that late game and now the earlier game today gives them that really that less recovery time. But for me, the big question is, how do they pick themselves up, not only physically, but emotionally as well? Absolutely, a really unfortunate result for the New Zealand team. They haven't been to the Olympics since 2008, that 15 year wait will last at least another four years as they try and compete for the next Olympics. Of course, we notice there's two players not out there looking at the, looking at the players standing out there. We'll look at the starting five to see how that affects it and tell you more about it after the national anthems. Guy Malloy in position and ready to go as we prepare to listen to the national anthems of France and New Zealand. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the national anthem of New Zealand. 女士们、先生们，请保持肃立，奏新西兰国歌。
Please be seated. Qing Zhuo. Great to see the two teams exchanging gifts before the game as they have done all tournament. Some smiles and hugs out there. Well, we know the referees have just the biggest job as the players do and today's referees on your screen now. Very proud to be here in Xi'an. James Boyer, Peter Prach and Jacqueline Dover. Boyer and Dover actually Australian referees, so Dover not from Brazil. Uh, while Prach Charles from Hungary. Hungary. All three officials have 18 years of experience combined between them, so a very capable panel, as always, to take us through today's game. We're now going to get into the lineups, and we're going to start with France. Hasn't Marine Jahan has been lining it up this tournament for this French team? Two wins from the tournament so far. They'll be hoping for a third tonight, and they've put up a capable starting five to compete with this New Zealand team. It is Sherry, Ayayi, Salon, Williams, and Bernays, Lori. A couple of different starters in that lineup. We can see Bernays, Bernays is in there, and she's in there because she had a great game against China, 8.6 assists, and we see Cherie getting her first start. But as you mentioned, Johannes, as she has done the both two games, comes off the bench and is an amazing spark. Bench also has the tooks on there. We don't see her in, in our commentary position warming up, but we hopefully will see her during the Olympics and hope that there's nothing and no serious injury of some sort. But that's coach John Amey Tupan. He's done a great job of leading the team this tournament. And after tonight, his sights will be firmly set on his team's home Olympics in July. Very exciting prospect. But not only the coach, but the players, the staff, it just takes a village to get to the summit of women's basketball and basketball in general. We're now going to swing over to the to the New Zealand team, I should say. And obviously, a bit of a depleted lineup from the get-go. We know they're missing some star power. It appears that we've got Tada Reid and McKenna Dale not suiting up at all. We saw them on the sidelines in a tracksuit. And Dale also in a moon boot. So not looking good for her. We hope that it's not too much of a serious injury. But their starting five is also looking a little different tonight. It's Stella Beck, Sean Rabati, Ezra McGoldrick, Victoria Tamilo and Taylor Dalton. Yeah, it's great to see Rabati, who hasn't played a lot of minutes, step into that starting lineup. So, so that'll be a great thrill for her. And, and Dalton, we know, has come off the bench, but, but done some really good things in this tournament. So, yes, they're down. Tara Reed is, a, is an absent. She's been playing really well. Uh, but you know what? As we say, when there's a, a injuries, it gives opportunities for other players. Had to battle hard all tournament, this young New Zealand team. There's coach Guy Malloy on screen, just giving his final address. He's remained positive all tournament. Might have listened to him now. So the Tissot countdown tells us there's just one minute towards tip-off. We know this game doesn't mean a whole lot in terms of Olympic qualification, but it is a great opportunity for both teams to perhaps try a few new things. Well, it's not only about trying new things, it's, it's about maybe consolidating some key areas as well. And for New Zealand in particular, it's so important to continue to expose this young lineup to the elite level of play. Remember, there are four players making their senior debut, so this sort of game time, court time, is invaluable for any young player. Stella Beck, she led the team brilliantly last night. Led with 21 points. Tried her heart out to get the team through. Gabby Williams, hasn't she been a star throughout the tournament for France? So many weapons on the floor right now. And of course, Marie Johannes on the bench to come. And they now get to head onto the court and get ready to do battle for one final time in this Olympic qualifying tournament here in Seattle. It's been a wonderful Olympic qualifying tournament, a great display of basketball, especially by the French team as they get ready for the jump. Welcome to Shanxi Provincial Gymnasium. It's New Zealand up against France in the second last game of the Olympic qualifying tournament in China. And it's New Zealand who get first possession. Tamila with a nice spin, couldn't complete the basket. Chanel Salon. 
Ayayi, Bernays, Shetty, her first start for the tournament. Bernays starting in place of usually their first select point guard, Manid Futuk, and Williams pops in her first two points of the game. Well, the last two games we've talked about her athleticism, athleticism being on display and her explosiveness, and she started already to show us what she's made of. Stella Beck kicks it out to Dalton, starting tonight for New Zealand, and makes an immediate impact. What a great first shot for Dalton in the corner. Again, Beck finding her teammate in that receiver spot. Great pass. Here's Williams now. Solon gets the screen from Ayayi. Kicks it out to Sherry from the corner, and she lands one too. Stella Beck bringing the ball down for New Zealand. Rabati rolling. Pass just went over her head. Great idea when she was there was complete denial on there. So instead of being indecisive, you just need to make a back cut quickly. And uh, Stella Beck didn't quite find her on that pass. Bernays averaging five points and two rebounds and four and a half assists per game this tournament as well. Ranks third for assists. Salon. This is the shot. McGoldrick. She's been a real positive impact player for New Zealand. Rabati. Shot fell short. Ayayi pushes the pace. Williams has Salon but wow. goes on her own. Four points already for Gabby Williams. That is such good pace that the France team pushed the ball with and running the lanes and a nice finish by Williams. Dalton, Rabati, this time, she heads to the line for two. Well, we didn't sort of know, Julia, how either team would approach this last game because, as you said, New Zealand are out of the tournament, France have well and truly qualified, but I like what I'm seeing. There's an intensity about both of them. Both coaches are up and about, you know, talking instructions to their players. France is up and in. New Zealand are looking to attack the rim. Good signs One. for both teams. And what an opportunity for Sean Rabati, her first start of the tournament, also her first point of the tournament as well. One of the young Tall Ferns players, Shetty, couldn't make it home. Beth, ranked six to rebounds and four for points. She's had a monster tournament. She goes again against Williams, goes under her and gets the finish. Wow. And I fear for every time Stella yeah. Beck hits the deck. She had a big night last night, playing 38 minutes. And Williams gets the M1. What a start. Well, it's not only a great offensive start for Williams, but she played full court defense on Beck that whole way down the court. Beck did a great job of finishing because Williams, as we know, she's an elite defender and uh, she's doing it at both ends right now. Gets the three point play to go. Seven points already for Gabby Williams. Beck, guarded by Shetty. McGoldrick finds some space, gets her own rebound. She's been a rebounding machine, Ezra McGoldrick. Beck tries to get around Bernays. And Bernays can get it to Williams and the French team can go again. Gabby Williams for nine points. What a great recognition by Gabby Williams on transition there. Defense was there, but not set, and she was just able to easily weave her way to the basket. She has not missed a field goal yet, Gabby Williams. Four from four for nine points. Stella Beck. Try the bounce pass, it just came off the foot. And again, Guy Malloy looking to his bench pretty quickly. Lauren Hippolyte is going to replace Sean Rabati. Lauren Hippolyte averaging four and a half points per game. Into Tamilo.
And Ayayi was the one who committed the foul. Ayayi, one of eight French players who have been to the Olympics before. So we're hoping to get on that plane to Paris once again. Camilo had to compete hard for the ball and there's Beck just ducks from it. It was a foul call in the middle of it. A bit happening out there. Well, Stella Beck was trying to cut really hard through the key and uh, just a little bit, um, a little bit of a push on the way through. And Williams cuts it off. She is on fire, Gabby Williams. How much fun is she having out there? She is absolutely enjoying this, as she should. She's had a fantastic tournament, coming off 17 points last night. And she's already up to 11. We're not even finished the first quarter. Salon gets a piece of the party as well. A 9-0 run to Frez at the moment. They've got eight fast break points, leading 15 points to six. And, and those fast break points has become, and we've talked about it all tournament when they played uh, the other two teams that they're playing suff suffocating defense. So they have their hands in the passing lanes. They're looking at getting deflections. They're in denial. And so they're able to come up with those steals. It's really impressive to see. Palace Hockey Anger, the 16-year-old, into the game nice and early. Joined by Lauren Whitaker in that bunch of subs. France still have their starters on the floor. Hippolyte. Confronted by Ayayi. Dalton. Here is that defense we were talking about, Laurie. And they go off to transition into offense. Williams just glides in. She is having a field day. A timeout called by Guy Malloy and the New Zealand team. They've got a bit of thinking to do. Gabby Williams has taken over this game. 13 of her team's 17 points. And take a look at this move. She just rose in the air with ease. What a finish. What a player. Well, they certainly are going to have to discuss how they are going to control her because, wow, she's doing it all for them. Yeah. Right, now this girl gets put under pressure. The roller is open. This girl is denied. Stay there. Don't back door. This girl looked a flash. You got it? So when we get to here off push, sorry, look to hit here, high low out of that. So we're going to stay in the push. And when the ball moves over and gets to second side, we've got to attack low closeouts. We can't let them set back up again. So we've got to be ready to catch this. Here, is, here it is again, the steal from Williams, the easy lay-in. And then she takes over, dribbles in, rises up, and drains another two. Has not missed tonight. Six from six from the field. 13 points. Well, one thing New Zealand, when, when a team's playing like that, up and in and in denial, and trying to get steals like Williams is, you need to use your pass fakes. Get the defense moving. Pass, pass fake. Hopefully they'll get out in the passing lane and then maybe you can backdoor cut. But you've got to make some changes somewhere right now. And that's not going to help from a goal, Drake. A bit of a loopy pass. And of course, Williams was there. Yeah. Defense, offense, everywhere. Looks like her arms are double the length, just stealing everything that comes her way. Hockey anger against Bonet. This is a great challenge for the 16 year old. Gets it back from Dalton. Putting the ball to the floor and then finding Whitaker. He's blocked by Badian, who came on during that timeout. Johannes also entering the floor. Ayayi now. Bernays. Williams. She's got the hot hand at the moment. Finds Badian. She gets bumped out of it. Good defense. Dalton wants to move it quickly. But again, look at this France defense. It falls to Ayayi. Johannes is running. 
stops, passes. That's a beautiful look. Well, I thought maybe she was going to pull up. That's her favorite shot in transition is to come down and pull up in three. But she saw, saw a much better shot for her teammate and was able to pass and find. Well, we talked about Johanna's score, but her assists have been just yes, as good this yes. tournament. Ranked five in the tournament, four per game. She's got eyes everywhere. And that certainly shows how what a team-oriented game they're playing where Johannes passes up a shot when she's a she's a great scorer herself but is not afraid to find her open teammate and, and give somebody else a basket. It's really good to see. So a few subs of both teams, Repair and Beck into the game. Also Alex Duche, Ayayi and Bernays are going to take a seat and Dalton was the one to come off for New Zealand. 19 points to six, four minutes left in this first term. It's been all France. Duche, Williams. Badian, Duche. This is better from New Zealand, but they still find a way through. So what I liked about that play phase with France is that you know, because they've had so many fast break opportunities, that was a good time to operate, to be able to execute a play in its hole. Badian matching in on the defensive end. It allows Williams to run. Duche somehow finds herself free. And that shot fell short. Beck. New Zealand need a basket. Fifteen O run by the French team since that Beck two. Whitaker now gets slapped out of her hands. Johannes pulls up, passes again. Badian back to Johannes, going up against Whitaker, swinging it to Duche, and Hippolyte is able to secure the rebound. Into Beck. Guarded by Johannes McGoldrick now. Whitaker, the 18 year old, up against Badian. And she just passes it out of bounds to Hippolyte. And Malloy can't do much on the sideline. Well, lines. you know, that's just inexperience. You know, she had the, she did the right move and then was stopped, and just a little bit of panic set in, and, and instead of just having that poise, threw it out of bounds but that's that is experience that or lack there of experience and and again playing in a game like this will it expose these young players to the level that they have to play at Michelle Booty on for Gabby Williams having a well-deserved rest after 13 points and six from six from the field to start this game Badian Dalton just looking for someone to come with her that brings it down herself Hesitates. McGoldrick thought about putting up the shot and then it got snatched away from her by Michelle Bunny. Johannes now. Duche. Johannes in the corner. Marie Johannes launches. Well, they look like they are having a lot of fun out there. As soon as it left the hand, you just knew it was going to drop. It's been dropping all tournament for Marie Johannes, a three-point weapon. Scored 17 points in both game, games this tournament, Marie Johannes. She's on the board tonight. Here is Badian, another steal for the French team. And she puts in another two points. This is relentless. See what Dalton and Beck can provide for New Zealand. She finds a way through Stella Beck. And she got fouled. That's a good drive from the captain. Well, that's really what she was doing last night. She, she kept that scoreboard ticking over with her drives to the basket and, you know, getting herself to the foul line. As you said, right in the opener, she would be sore today. I, I even wondered whether she'd actually play, but, you know, that's that's the competitiveness in her. Come and, on, Sorry, you go, Laurie. Well, even, that, that's, that's what it means to any player to play for their national team. 
You know, they, they, they will put it on at every, put the uniform on at every opportunity. And you could just see the passion in, in all the teams that, we've, that have been on show today, or, or for the whole tournament, really. Yeah, we saw Puerto Rico last night qualifying through and the tears from players, from staff, from coaches. Everyone was just elated to get through. Look at that, 26 to four run by France in the last eight minutes. And they get another chance here through Michelle Booty. Johannes, will she go for another three? Kicks it back to Michelle Booty. Badian, repaired. Short. And it gets back to Stella Beck. Under a minute left in this first period. It's been very hard going for New Zealand. As we came to expect. You know, this French team did a job really on China last night. A 32-point victory. I mean, we we always wondering whether it would be France or China that would win. We knew it was 50-50, but that margin, we, we couldn't really predict. We were really surprised at that and the way that uh, France came out or, or the way that China didn't come out. But but France are impressive. They are, they, they doesn't matter who their opposition is, they are playing the exact same way. And look at that, you just saw a repair there. Effort after effort after effort, it ended in a foul. But she tried to steal it the first time, steal it the second time, and then the block just touched the arm of McGoldrick. It's just effort after effort after effort. And that shows a team that's really sending a bit of a message that, you know, they, they want to perform at um, Paris. They want to make sure they're going to be in front of their home fans, and they're only going to build and continue to build between now and the end of July. Of course, they had to play against the mind of the Chinese fans last night. They're probably thinking, oh, it's going to be so good when we play in front of our fans in July. Johannes, could she put the finishing touches on a fantastic quarter from France? Of course she can. So even though Johannes had the ball in her hands for a while, the other players were still moving. They have not stopped moving on offense. There's great ball, there's great player movement, and it's just continuous. It's relentless offense, relentless defense from the French team. Johannes with five points and the signature leg up of the shot. It's become a marine specialty. At the end of the first period, it's been a tough one for New Zealand. The score reads France 28, New Zealand 9. A 19 point lead to the French team. They've come out as we expected them to, really, but I guess I'm just so surprised about how they just keep being perfect, really. It's just well, incredible. Th there's always room for improvement. There's always areas they... So as I mentioned, yes, they got a lot of fast break points, but you could tell when they called the play, they executed it. They got it through hands. There were various people that could have shot it, but it was almost like they were getting to the end of their play, and, and, and then, you know, the shot came. But that's what they can afford to do in this game and, and look at you know defensively on the pick and roll they might want to change up what they do to, to practice different options so they have this armory of, of things to do further down the track and how good was gabby williams to start off this game i mean has not missed she just got the team started and continued on her merry way in this tournament have taken a claim for MVP. Well, look, it's, it's something that, you know, there's a, a few choices out there, but certainly Gabby Williams would have to have to be up there in consideration. And the way she started this game is not going to hurt her chances at all. I wonder what you do as a coach. I mean, someone's had such a great start. Do you sit her on the bench a bit more for the rest of the game? Do you let someone else take over? It's, it's a challenge that Jean-Aimé Tupin's got and a good challenge to have as a coach. Of course, you can watch all the Olympic qualifying tournament action on the Courtside app, as well as keep up with the latest news and highlights by scanning the QR code on your screen. Olympic qualifying tournaments around the world heating up too, Laurie. I think we'll see uh, probably a fairly even spread of minutes 
for the France team. Give everybody an opportunity. Look at different combinations. Tipping off the second period. France with a 19-point lead over New Zealand. We know they've already qualified for the Olympics as hosts. New Zealand, unfortunately, have already missed out. Malonga gets the scoring going for France. Been super impressed by the 18-year-old French centre, Dominique Malonga. She's had some really nice moments offensively and defensively. And there's just great youth all over the floor out there tonight. New Zealand have got a lot of promising players that will be the future of their team. It's quite exciting. Dalton cut really hard there and, and she forced Johannes just her hand just got sort of caught wrapped around her and that foul was called. Goldrick backing down on repair. Repair too strong. Duchesne now. Michelle Booty. Alex Duche just found a lane, couldn't complete the basket. She had well, a couple of those easy looks tonight. Well, New Zealand weren't quite very uh, assertive on what they were doing on that pick and roll. There was no really hard show, there was no switch, and they need to make sure that they got their rules in place. Johannes, nice blocking out. There's a heap of white jerseys there up against Malonga. Fighting hard for every rebound, every point, every moment. This is the New Zealand team. Stella Beck, Hippolytes for three. It was a nice look. And repair got interfered with. Hippolyte is actually a, a personal trainer in New Zealand, so we know that she's got a very high fitness level. She's shown at this tournament. You know, playing a position, I think we mentioned in another game, that she's not really used to. She's often been the, the main point guard. She's carried herself well, that's for sure. Johannes. Touche. Michelle Booty gives Johannes another look at it. And this time she drops it. Such great spacing by the French team. They had New Zealand in rotations. They were just able to make a nice skip pass for an easy bucket for Johannes. Beck up high. She shares it with McGoldrick. McGoldrick was rolling for it. Couldn't find her. And then the bounce pass. Shot clock expired. She would have loved to have one more second. She nearly completed the move under the basket. Good help defense by France. And here we see Amy West for her first minutes tonight. Didn't play against Puerto Rico last night, so she should be relatively fresh. Johannes, one way then the other. Again from the corner, Marie Johannes. Malonga still fighting hard. Repair. Michelle Goody. Again, the passing from the French team on display, and Duche gets involved. Their assists have just been incredible this whole tournament. The French team. Well, they have, and that's what I said at the tar start. They they are averaging 24 assists in each of their first two games and, and so they are looking to go from a good shot to a great shot and whether that's inside or whether that's another perimeter shot shooter uh, they're really looking for each other and you can see the defense how suffocating it is 10 turnovers for New Zealand one for France this game and there goes another one You feel for the New Zealand team, Laurie. I mean, they, they've already confirmed that they're not going to Paris. They come and they face probably the hardest test they've had to this tournament in France. With sore bodies added to it, with emotional baggage, I suppose, added to it as well. And repair inflicts some more pain. 
Well, you know, this may sound counterintuitive, but the fact that France are out there playing as hard as they are, that, that to me shows a level of respect to any opponent that they play. So, you know, it's always respect everybody, fear no one, and, and that's how they're playing. And, and so, well, <laughs> that's a bit hard for New Zealand to realize that's a good thing right now. Um, but that's a good thing by Dalton, we just saw. It is a sign of respect. Absolutely. Even last night, they, put it, they could have put the cue in the rack. They could have taken it easy, but they kept their foot on the pedal and got the win over China by 32. Michelle Booty. Oh, my goodness. It's a three-point party. Four from seven from three-point land for France. They lead by 30. Six minutes to go until half time. Amy West had a nice look at it. Johannes. The Goldrick fouls. Johannes has such great court vision. She's just got really good peripheral vision where she can just see her, her, her teammates and really make a bullet pass to wherever they are. She comes off for a well deserved rest now. Eight points. Three from five from the field to go with two assists from Marie Johannes. And we're going to see Salon and Bernays coming on as Dominique Wenlonga takes two free throws. Bernays, who we've talked about, was, was great against China. That eight points, uh, six assists, but it was just the energy that she played with. Wenlonga misses both. Benet's in the action here. Eight points, two rebounds, and six assists last night. Not a bad night. Repair. Michelle Boudy. Here is Bernays. Sets her feet and then passes it off. It falls to repair. Spinning on West. Dalton. To hit the light. That was better for New Zealand. West didn't get repair, much room to put up the shot. Hippolyte one way than the other. Using that fitness on display. Dalton puts in another one. A good little catch here by Taylor Dalton. Four points, a couple of rebounds in this last minute. Michelle Booty. Into repair. Loves that range. Everything is just coming so easily for this France outfit. So confirmation. Taylor Dalton with the seven points. She's been fighting hard for this New Zealand team tonight. Didn't score last night. Salon to Malonga to Bucket. It's all too easy for the French team, like you mentioned, Laurie, and it forces a timeout from Guy Malloy. They're down 43 points, to 45 points, I should say, to 13. Four minutes left in the second period. Look at these active hands from the big centre, Dominique Malonga. To Salon, to Malonga. It's just beautiful team basketball. We've seen it on display, old tournament from the French team. We take a listen into Guy Malloy. Don't just walk to the top, sprint to the top is Guy Malloy's last message. And France, they are sprinting. Well, and they're just everywhere making that extra pass. We see that skip pass to Johannes, and she's ready to catch and shoot it. They're shooting the, the ball right now at 63% France. Unbelievable clip. Especially after playing two games in two days previously. 
And look at that, starting 5 points, 17, 28 points from the bench. That just shows how much depth this team has as well. Well, we talked about that yesterday with Futuk's only playing a handful of minutes, how Duche and Bernays both stepped up. And even the subs, they're just like for like. One comes on, one comes off. They're the same player and they get the same results. Just like Michelle Booty there. Ezra McGoldrick. Dalton. Of course, New Zealand don't have Tada Reed and McKenna Dale out there. They've been two of their better players this tournament. Hey. Amy West. Nice pass by Dalton. Good position by Amy West and a nice finish. That's her first points for the tournament. So a nice moment for Amy West. Michelle Booty. Salon catches and finishes. That was actually a good, they, they did a good job on the on ball. They stuck to their rules on the ball reversal. They closed out. That was just pure height and a great pass in the air that afforded France to get that basket. The one-handed catch as well. Dalton, leading scorer for New Zealand. Bernays. Did well there, just couldn't quite handle it. And she has been just at her, at her opponents all tournament, right there with them. Every step they take, she's there. Well, she's got such active hands and active feet, so she's just ready. She's down low, she's moving, she's anticipating. Tough to play against her. Speaking of tough to play against, Gabby Williams back on the floor, just when you thought it couldn't get worse for New Zealand. France's leading scorer back out there. She's yet to miss this game. Valerie and Ayayi, the other one to come on the floor. Man Bernays, five points and two rebounds, four and a half assists are averages this tournament. Salon, Ayayi, and Hippolyte just stepped out over the line. Good hustle there though, nonetheless. Abby Williams. Ayayi, ready to shoot. Salon, again, reaching out for the ball. Sherry steps into it. Can't land it. Salon again underneath all that. Gets back to back basket. Well, they forced a shot that was, you know, quite a ways out from that three-point line from Cherie, Cher but um, great offensive rebound. And again, Janelle Salon picks it off. This time finds Bernays, ducks under Beck, and finishes it off. And hasn't Janelle Salon made a good impact so far? Only 22 years old. It, I often have to remember that myself. She just looks so much older and more experienced. One of the bright pieces of this France future. Shetty. Ayayi. Puts the ball on the floor. A nice hard drive. Although Dalton doesn't agree. <laughs> France are making really good decisions. You know, that decision by uh, Ayeyi to, to penetrate. She looked, there was no, nobody to pass it to. Defense, she thought she could get her foot speed on that, which she certainly did. And so, so a good decision to drive it in and take it to the basket. Well, Ayeyi, five and a half points per game, five rebounds and two and a half assists. Her average is this tournament. Ranked 10th in rebounds and assists. The thing with France is that anytime there's subs made, they're, they're very like-for-like -like type players. So, you know, you look at Bernays, Duche, Foutouks, they're very similar in, in, you know, what they can bring and what they can offer. And then you've got your bigs, they're all long, they're quick. And the difference for New Zealand, they couldn't even bring a designated point guard to the tournament, let alone have one in the game. 
We know their injury troubles with Charlize Ledger Walker, Crystal Ledger Walker. Out. Even Talia Chapaya was one that could use that, be used in that point position. And then, of course, their starting center, Panina Davidson, who was in the All-Star 5 at the Asia Cup as well. But, you know, they, they've battled hard. I, I, as I said, they have to, at some stage, they'll be, they'll be proud of their effort against, uh, against Puerto Rico, that two-point loss, just agonizing for them. Um, but, you know, all things considered. Oh, my goodness. This is clinical by France. And Ayayu straight back on defense. Williams also adding to her tally amongst all that. Up to 15 points for the game. Seven from seven from the field. Under a minute left. New Zealand will be wheeling this halftime buzzer, but Hippolyte has a great look. Great job by Hippolyte to persevere with that. Stay strong. Williams, Salon, Bernays. Bucket. That really looked like a training drill. Dribble, baseline, penetration, kick it to the receiver spot in the corner and make the next pass. Hippolyte now, can she go back to back? And yeah, you got no way. A France ball with 15 seconds left. They'd be known to beat the buzzer a few times in this tournament. I wonder what they've got left here. Eighty-two points for the game last night. They've already got sixty-one at half time. An offensive masterclass, and we know how good their defense has been to match as well. And that just says it all. A fantastic performance from France to open this penultimate game of the Olympic qualifying tournament here in Sian. We know they've already qualified for the Olympics, but it doesn't matter to them. They're playing to win this tournament. They're playing to show that they should be respected as one of the key contenders for a medal at the Olympic Games. But for now, they've got a job to do here in Sian. Still one more half coming up against New Zealand. But for now, it's a pretty convincing lead. 61 up against 17. New Zealand literally hobbling into the rooms. A confirmation of the scores. About to come up on your screen now. A 44 point margin. It's France 61 leading New Zealand 17. Well, I don't think France could have started uh, this game, this half, any better than they did with the likes of Williams coming out and, and scoring strongly to really, really set the tone of that whole first half of the game. It showed her intent, it showed the team's intent, but just look at that percentage, 71%. 45 from the uh, three-point line is, is uh, nothing to, uh, you know. <laughs> nothing to gloss over for oh sure. Oh my that goodness. Is unreal. So look at that, the rebounds and great. assists as well. Yeah, so it's, um, it's a, a convincing first half by, by France. And not a lot New Zealand can do in this situation other than learn from, uh, learn from one of the great teams. You know what sticks out to me the most out of all that is France has 61 points for the half, but only one player is in double figures. They have just continued to share around the scoring throughout the whole tournament. Well, they have, and we've talked about them all week, making the extra pass and seeing the open player, and they've got so many scoring weapons. And those weapons are inside and out, you know, so they they can look inside. You know, there was a, a, an amazing stat against China where they scored more inside than China did, and we know the bigs of, of China, how potent they are, so... They've got a really well-rounded game plan, France. Uh, they've got scores that look to, to penetrate. Uh, they get a great receiver spot. But as I said at the beginning, what I'm most impressed with is their defensive intensity. And they've always wanted to be known as a great defensive team. And they've certainly, certainly ticked that box today. So Marine Fortuk's the only one not to score. We haven't seen her out here today at all. So every player on the scoreboard already at the half of France. And as Laurie spoke about, their defensive prowess is just as good. A bit to think about for this New Zealand team, but it's about small goals now, right? Just winning the corner, winning the five-minute periods, just getting some small wins. Well, I think it is, and I think it's 
you know, running, uh, executing a play and, and scoring out of it. And maybe not even scoring, but doing everything right. So a high pick and roll, the, the big slipping and the guard getting it to them. And, you know, if they finish it, that's great. But, but it's doing those, those little things uh, to try and go, we're improving or at least we're getting this experience against a very, very good team. And they'd certainly be grateful about the level of the game. I mean, France could have easily thrown you the towel, but as you mentioned at the start of this game, they're, they're showing respect to this New Zealand team. They know that they can compete with the best of them when it matters. And, you know, it, it sounds like we're all doom and gloom, but New Zealand came within two points of getting to the Paris Olympics. I mean, it's, it's sad that it's gone the other way, but they're fighting hard out there. They're continuing to, to show what they're made of, this young team. And just wait till they get those players back in the lineup. And you have to remember, New Zealand's world ranking is 23 against France, which is seventh. So, you know, you're always not going to know there's been a disparity in, in that, in their, in their skill level and their experience level. Uh, so, they've just got to keep plugging away, and, and, and Guy Malloy's the perfect coach to do that. Justice. We sometimes take these simple things for granted. They're not common for all of us. We are all born on the same planet, but not with the same opportunities. Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are one. We are all on the same team. Let's convince those who never thought they would do it, that they can, we can. Together, Together we, we are, are stronger. stronger. No matter your origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good.
go and review this. If they have won on that play, that will be a stunner from Brianna Stewart. Welcome back to Shanxi Provincial Gymnasium where it's France leading New, leading New Zealand by 44 points at half time. The game leaders for the French team are Williams with 15 points, Salon with 5 assists and Repair with 4 rebounds. We knew Gabby Williams would come out and attack this game hard but it hasn't just been her, it's been every single one of the French players out on the floor contributing to what's been a scintillating first half, Laurie. Well, they absolutely have. Uh, everybody's hit the score sheet already. Everybody's been playing, sharing the ball around. I'm just so impressed with lots of different aspects of their, of their game. So on offense, the way they're spacing, the way they're moving. So they're moving really well off the ball forcing New Zealand into some really com uncomfortable rotations. Uh, and then the main thing is, is that they're hitting that, e they're making that extra pass. They're, as I said, going from a great shot to, to uh, an even better shot. And so that's where they're way up in the assist column with uh, 17 assists so far this game already. Um, and that's been what's been most impressive to me. New Zealand's game leaders, Dalton with seven points and two assists and Magoljic with the three rebounds. I really like the look of Taylor Dalton today. I think she's been the one that's provided the spark. We knew Stella Beck wasn't going to come out, 
probably with the same ferocity as last night, considering the toll it might have taken on her body, but Taylor Dalton's really stepped up. Well, Dalton stepped up, but I still think Stella Beck is playing an incredibly important role. She has to be the leader, the general on this team, so when she's on the court, she brings the ball up. Sometimes it's against full court pressure, you know, with Bernays and, and Duche up in her, and then she's trying to call the play. She's trying to set her teammates up, and at the same time, when things are breaking down, get the ball back into her hand at the end of a shot clock. So, yes, uh, she hasn't scored quite as much, but her and Dalton really have played crucial roles. Tend to agree. And I think Guy Malloy will agree as well. Let's head into his huddle and take a bit of a listen. Make your play of the first or the second dribble. The ball's got to move quick. No medal on the defense. You're in black. Every other player's in red. Here we go. Let's go, ladies. Go! Guy Malloy is the perfect coach to take this young New Zealand team. He is an excellent teacher of fundamentals. He's patient. Uh, he's brought into this program since he started in 2018 some height, some energy, some athleticism. Um, and he's really trying to teach them a good brand of basketball. And I think they can only, only improve under his tutelage. So getting ready to start the second half. It's France leading 61 to New Zealand 17. And Bernays will start with the ball here in Xi'an, China, in what's been a magnificent Olympic qualifying tournament. France, China and Puerto Rico have booked their tickets to Paris in July. Johannes has played a big part in the reason why. We know they're Olympic hosts. It was a great look by Johannes and a really good re-screen. So, so she posted up Badian, passed it out and then re-posted up. And um, uh, Johannes was looking for it, just didn't quite, didn't quite make the pass. Stella Beck now. She's got her by Johannes on court alongside Rabati, McGoldrick, Camilo and Dalton. They've gone back to their starters. Beck still with it. And loses it. That's a really strong show on that on-ball screen by Badian. Really forced Beck to go out of her path the way that she wanted to go. 2.4 seconds left here to put up a shot for New Zealand. And Beck got fouled. It was a nice drive, a good idea. Well, she was certainly aware of the shot clock, 2.4 seconds on the clock, and a, a good decision to just put it to the floor and throw it towards the basket and hope that a foul would be called, and certainly it was. She's such a smart player, Stella Beck. Well, she's the most experienced player on this team. She does have a high basketball IQ. in those free throws. One more to come. I think everybody was questioning whether that was a three-point, whether as, she as fouled on the yeah. three-point shot. It, it looked like it was a, a drive, but we'll oh, give her that extra happy. shot. Yeah. She'd be happy to have anything extra that comes her way. And she deserves it to, to her credit. Five points in this game for Stella Beck. Ayayi. She's fouled on the opposite end. Everything that France is doing right now is, is quick. So they're not just passing and cutting slowly through the key. They are sprinting through the key. They're sprinting to set screens. 
you saw that Ayei put it to the floor and was really explosive in what she does. Ayei, of course, was part of that Frogs medal winning team at the 2020 Olympics for France. Interestingly, France, before the start of this game, had only taken nine foul shots in two games, so they certainly don't find themselves at the line very often. This game so far, they've taken seven shots. So adding another dimension to the game, how scary is that? Getting to the line as well. And I guess it's just been their ability to just finish like that. Great they don't even need to go to the line. <laughs> Great timing of the pass by Williams. She just waited, passed just slightly ahead, able to scoop it up and score. Camila, oh, oh what too a slow. What a steal by Williams. Just going to finish it off. She's able to put a smile on her face, though. I'd like to see her attempt a dunk. I reckon Absolutely, she's got the, yes. got the hops she's got to the be hops. able to do that. I reckon her and I'd look out for Dominique Malonga as well. If she gets open, watch out. McGoldrick gives the New Zealand fans something to cheer about. That looked really nice, leaving her hand, McGoldrick. Nice and balanced, good follow through. That in, as easy as you like at the other end. Here, Jonah made two pounds, still barking orders on the sidelines. You mentioned Guy Malloy is the right coach for New Zealand, but Jonah made two pounds has also done a fantastic job for this French team. Well, he certainly has. You know, we talked about at the beginning of this tournament, this is a great, was a great opportunity to France to build some chemistry and look at rotations and, and balance within the group. Well, you'd have to give him and his team a big tick and a gold star in that regard. They, they've uh, really come to the party. Whitaker on the floor for New Zealand. Involved in his play with Hippolyte. McGoldrick, great hands. Just couldn't finish off the shot. He's been a really positive rebounder all tournament. Johannes has been a great passer. This time feeds Williams. One way, then the other. Badian. Bernays. Every player's touched the ball in this set. Williams can't finish it off. So New Zealand starting off this second half certainly a bit better than the first half. France have scored just the five points so far in this turf. Whitaker. Gets a hold of it, eventually. Williams, a look ahead pass to Ayayi. She's off and running again. Ayayi coming into this game. Great transition, or fast break basketball. Really get your hands on that rebound to steal a little knock out of Whitaker and just get your eyes up and run and get ahead, kick it ahead. Whitaker to Dalton, to McGoldrick. Her second triple for the game. All right, get the ball in her hands. Set up a play for her. Eight points and four rebounds for Ezra McGoldrick. Coming off 11 points and 10 rebounds oh, last night. But I tell you what, that's just too good. Such a strong curl cut by Williams. And she caught that ball. Eyes were up early and so strong to the basket. Williams up to 17 points for the night. McGoldrick, Badian, Johannes up against Beck. Williams ahead of her. Can she go this time? Gets it back to Johannes for three. Oh, that would have One been a bit of... One of them was going to hit. One of them was going to hit. <laughs> Beck now. Whitaker. Beck couldn't quite get the look. Nice back door cut, just hard to finish over the long reach of the France team. Wow. Again, that movement off the ball, dribble penetration. 
Williams moving to the basket. 19 points. Gabby Williams. Hippolyte. Dalton. This is good by New Zealand. They've shared it around. Deserve to finish. That was a great opportunity. France are in a 2-3 zone, so good opportunity to France to, to practice some sort of different defense. And we know throughout a whole tournament, like the length of the Olympics, is that you've got to be able to switch your defenses up. If a team is, is getting on a roll, you have to be able to change, to throw something different at them, whether that's full court pressure, whether that's falling back into a zone like we just saw, you need to make teams uncomfortable. And so it's a, a great opportunity, as we mentioned, for France to just to try some different things, get a feel. You know, they wouldn't have probably worked that much on a zone because they're certainly their 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 one-on-one -on -one defense is fantastic so really good opportunity but we see johannes put it up again not quite this time subs onto the floor for both teams hockey anger and richards duchet and shetty for the french team johannes keeps it in she's off and running williams my goodness 20 piece for Gabby Williams. She's making it look so easy out there. Three straight buckets for her. Well, she's making it look easy because her teammates are also helping her make it look easy. She is getting rewarded. You see Johannes, just her perseverance here, then just times that pass. So, you know, she is running hard, Williams, but her teammates are rewarding her for that effort. Let's listen to Guy Malloy. Doesn't mean that you two walk up the floor. You get it? Get a work rate. All of our post girls, get a work rate. So if the guard's pushing the ball up the floor, I don't care who we put here, the five is there. And then we're working hard to get open. Right? Stop walking down the floor and thinking that will do it. Can you lift your work rate? We're bringing the ball over the top of pick and roll, and you're flanking hard. And I want to know that there is a big in place. And a take two. You get it? Yeah. So let's get some energy. No one's going to feel sorry for us. Pick up our work rate right now. If they show zone, we're in cross. Respond to the call and move. Very clear message from Coach Guy Malloy that whilst his team is, you know, a lot less experienced, a uh, less skill level, he doesn't want them to be outworked. So he wants a better work rate out there. Don't don't get out hustle, don't walk up the floor, don't walk to set screens. Everything's got to be increased, the, the work rate. And that's a standard that he is setting for this team and, and, and for the program in general. You mentioned he's exactly the right person to take this team forward. Coaching with the Sydney Flames currently in the Australian League. Dalton. Hockey Anger. Hippolyte. Was calling for it for a long time. Good rebound by Whitaker. Good second chance opportunity coming up for New Zealand perhaps. But the pass from Richards was just too heavy. Well, I thought Zoe Richards was actually, when she caught the ball at the foul line, that she could have turned and just looked to the basket, but instead she was, had, had you know, passed, was a passer, and uh, instead of looking at your shot first. Richards yet to score this tournament. She'll be looking for her first points tonight. Johannes now to Duche. Williams into Badian. Still with Gabby Williams. Look at all this passing. Lisa will be breathing a sigh of relief to get that rebound and get out of there. Hockey Anger, wouldn't it be great to see her get on the score sheet? Youngest ever tall fern. So you can see that France are back into one on one defense. So I would say on a score, they're going in the zone and, and one on one when they miss. Great block by Williams there, in amongst all of that. And you can hear 
coach Guy Malloy. He's speaking to every single one of his players after everything they do. His voice will be pretty sore after this tournament, no doubt. Well, and you can see Tupan on the sideline, too, just giving Johannes just a little bit of instruction, too. So it's so great to see the coaches actively involved in this game as well. As you would expect at Absolutely. this level. Yes. Longer. Great defense there by Hokianga. Well, you have to say the effort level from New Zealand has lifted. As Coach Guy Malloy was imploring his, 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 his players to just increase their work rate. 14 points to eight this quarter in favor of France. A rare miss for Gabby Williams. Richards to Hockey Anger into Whitaker. Shetty read it better. Another sub into the floor for France. It's Michelle Booty who's going to replace Gabby Williams. She comes off with 21 points, 10 from 13 from the field. Oh, and Michelle Booty, instant impact, cuts off that pass from Hockey Anger and then Malonga. Uncharacteristic error from her. Hippolyte did a good job of getting back, getting her feet in the paint and just putting a little indecision into the mind of where it should be passed. You have to admire this level of fitness as a personal trainer from the French team. I mean, they have not stopped running. Look at this, one-on-one -on -one defense, two-on-one -on -one defense, active hands. They just have an answer to everything. As we said repeatedly last night, it's continued today. Alex Duchesne, Michelle Boudy. Salon. That was great pick and roll defense, good help. Richards all the way back there to Dalton. Ten seconds left here for this New Zealand team to put up a shot. And a jump ball force by Michelle Goody and Dalton. Dalton trying to push her way through that Michelle Booty grasp on the ball. Sixty point lead for France. A minute left in the third period. Malonga, oh, a bit too short on the shot. She gets a second chance. And another one to come. Just a little nice little cut. Nice little baseline cut. And when she received it here, don't know that she thought she was that wide open, or, but uh, good second effort. Finds herself at the line for an and one. Coming off six points and three rebounds last night against China. Eight points, four rebounds and two assists against Puerto Rico. She's getting her night off to a good start here. Her seventh point for the game. Now, if I heard a rumor too that she has dunked in games before, she has I'm not sure about in games, but she definitely has dunked before. I've seen videos, <laughs> so I'm hoping to see it. I'm sure you all are at home, hoping to see one here. Richards! We're seeing the athleticism of these young athletes, not just Malonga in the French team, but there's a lot of American athletes now coming through the college system who we know have got massive hops. The future of basketball around the world is so bright as we head into another Olympics in Paris come July. Hockey Anger, the 16-year-old, doesn't get the roll. She was wheeling that one in. So a whistle blown here. I think Hockey Anger's got a bit of blood on her leg. It's Hippolyte that's... Oh, sorry, Hippolyte? Looking at Hippolyte, the referee's just pointing her, her shin, so I'm sure she'll get that patched up very quickly. Stella Beck, a very capable replacement for this last 20 seconds of the third term. Boucher. Shares it around with Shetty. Gets a look at the basket and knocks it down. 
feel like I'm repeating myself, but such good movement. Dalton's got to put this up, and she does, and she scores on the buzzer. Kayla Dalton, and you're right, she has had a good quarter. And so too of New Zealand, to their credit. I know it's still a pretty significant margin, but 10 points to 19 reads much better than a 33 point to 8 quarter, which it was like in the second. And you can see Dalton, she was always going to put it up, wasn't she? Just banked it home. Malonga's hand in the face. And she rose up. best plays of the third quarter again of course it belonged to France but a good fight back from the young New Zealand team they're keeping themselves in this game and it seems to me that they are focusing on the small wins which is good to see well I think it, it came about uh, when Guy Malloy had that time out and, and really topped it and, and he wasn't focused on anything but effort that everything they do their work rate has to had to improve so, so he's not looking at the, the result, whether the ball goes in the basket, although that's a nice, <laughs> something nice to have. But he wants to see effort. He wants to see hustle, you know, running down the floor, not walking, cutting hard through the key. Uh, that's what he's interested in. So again, he's addressing the fact that there's changing up their defenses. So he's given them two options out there, what to run if they're playing one-on-one -on -one defense, what they're running if they're playing their zone defense. A reminder to download the Courtside 1891 app for all your latest news and highlights from all around the world. A lot up for grabs, not just here in Xi'an, but at the other three Olympic qualifying tournaments as well. As we tip off the fourth period, it's France 80, leading New Zealand 27. Cherie Michelle Bouny, Salon du Chaya Malonga. Out there for the French team. Cherie. And heads out of bounds. Be interesting to see if Johannes and Williams continue to stay involved in this game. We know we saw them sit for the whole fourth quarter last night. France were out to a comfortable lead over China. Malonga. That was a great pass by Michel Boré. The timing of it. As, as Malonga was rolling, Michel Boré just saw her out of the corner of her eye and literally, as she caught it, she passed it on. And we've talked about how good their passing is, but I think a lot of times today we've spoken about just how good the timing is. They just wait for each other so well. Well, they also pass it to space. It, you know, there's times where, yes, you have to pass it if they're posting up, you want to get it to their, their arms, their targets. But sometimes you pass it just a little bit in front, a little bit away from the defender's hands, and they're doing that really well. Camila had the right idea. Kakiega, that's a good rebound for her. Whitaker. Shot clock expires. She did get one up before the buzzer ended, so France up the other end. Good job there by Stella Beck, captain on captain. Unfortunately, she commits the foul. It's her first for the game. Shetty. Oh, Salon. These one-handed pickups and rebounds this game. It's been awesome to watch. Stella Beck now, Tamila rolling, great idea, great finish. 
That's exactly what Coach Guy Malloy wants from his team. It was a, a, a nice, strong roll, a good pass, and a nice finish. Malonga tried the, the, the thing on the other end. The same thing on the other end, I should say. Back up against Salon. And again, Stella Beck's body. We want an off the floor. Staying upright. Stella Beck always has the same look on her face. She doesn't give anything away, whether she's hurting, whether she's tired. She's, she just has a great game face. Camila with some aggressive offense there. Hockey Anger. Malonga brings it down. Finds the fellow Big Shetty. Again, it's getting through hands. A great pass to Salon. It doesn't roll in. Beck running the play now for New Zealand. Oh, Malonga, she's played a good part in this early part of the fourth period. No look pass. It comes back to Salon again. Doesn't look at Duche, but this time it doesn't translate. One of the rare times the pass hasn't come off for the French team. Repair coming into the game. A good seat, a stint from Dominique Malonga. She's up to nine points for the game. Hockey Anger against Duche. She's held herself up really well, Hockey Anger, this game. Whitaker, the 16 and the 18 year old combining to the 28 year old. The other 18 year old. And eventually Salon gets a hold of it into Duche. She's got Hank Hockey Anger ahead of her. Finds Michelle wow. Brody, who finds repair. Champagne basketball. Well, it's just fun. It's fun yeah. to watch. It's fun to play. And, and what a great way for them to end this tournament, you know, being able to all contribute, all play this sort of basketball. I hope you're enjoying it as much as we are at home. It's just fun. You're right. It's just what the people want to see at home. It's what the staff and the players want to see from each other. It just shows how how important chemistry is. I mean, this New Zealand team was really building before those key injuries. And now all of a sudden they've got to play with each other, play with a few new faces they might have never played with before. And doing it for the first time in an Olympic qualifying tournament. Shetty. They have another go from the sideline. Eighty six plays twenty nine. The last day of games here in Xi'an. China versus Puerto Rico to follow this. Alex Duche. Shetty sets. Misses. Well, whilst this is our last two games of this uh, tournament here in Xi'an, there's a couple of tournaments that are still going on that are still teams haven't qualified yet mm. julia there's um seven teams that are still where qualifications up for grabs but let's put that on hold for a minute and see if whitaker can and will finish great job whitaker but as i mentioned that pool in hungary with canada hungary japan and spain that will take place well, tonight in, in Japan in, in uh, China time, but they are all at one and one, and that'll be crucial to see who goes through, what three teams go through in that tournament. France, China, Puerto Rico from our pool have already qualified. We know USA, Belgium, Nigeria from the other pool, and Australia. So still lots of teams left to qualify. Seven in, seven still in contention. That's how it looks as we approach the last couple of games of the Olympic qualifying tournaments around the world. And isn't it exciting? Not one single team from the Hungry Pool is qualified. Yeah, what 
big last two games, those with games will be. Of course, you can watch them all on the courtside 1891 app, wherever you are around the world. Check your local guys as well. Malonga checking back in. Five and a half minutes left. Still yet to see Williams and Johannes in this fourth quarter. No real surprise there. I think they might have been put on ice already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well and truly. Hippolyte. <laughs> you can hear Guy Malloy there saying, call a foul, call a foul. <laughs> has been a constant voice all games, not just for the players, but for the refs as well. So Goldrick into Beck. Two of the bright sparks for New Zealand. A fantastic roll and finish from West. That was a perfect example of the timing that you mentioned of that pass into the, into the rolling to Milo. Oh, sorry, West. West. My <laughs> That's mistake. okay. My mistake. Malonga spinning on McGoldrick. There's nothing more Ezra could have done there. Malonga just with the reach. And it has been the story. Often New Zealand, it's, they've done all they can, but they've just been played against more experienced players who just find a way. And there it is again on show, Salon. Loves that sort of pass. Duchesne can't finish it off. Yes, that was a call over the back. So Salon was really well blocked out and she was trying to, attempting to go after the rebound. Uh, but she held her ground and a foul then called on her. Timeout called by New Zealand. They're down 35 points to 90. Four minutes 25 left. Coach Guy Beloy, wonder what he'll do here. They're about to take you into the huddle. Find out. But Laurie, you, if you were in this situation, I mean, what is it with this last four minutes 25? What can New Zealand get out of this game and this tournament overall in this last bit? Well, I think it's that there's nothing different to the way he's approached this whole game. Is that you know, don't you, there's no point in doing anything different. Let's just try. He's probably talking about a set that they know to run and how to run it. Uh, encouraging to make sure they've got their energy levels and they keep going there defensively. What they want to do, but that you're not you're not trying anything different at this stage of the tournament. Perhaps you know that pick and roll that we just saw. They want to continue with that. Uh, so just basic instructions and and really trying to continue to teach right till that last siren goes. Great find here from Michelle Puri to Malonga. And again, Michelle Puri finding repair. She's such a facilitator, the French captain. Eight assists to this game to go with five points. She was the only player that didn't score on Thursday night. Got on the score sheet last night with six points, two rebounds, and, or sorry, 13 points, five rebounds, and three assists. Hippolyte mm -hmm. for New Zealand to tip off after the timeout. Beck. Hippolyte. You can hear the noise out there from the French team. McGoldrick finds a way through. Great penetration by McGoldrick. When the ball reached her hand, she just punched it in straight away. Great attack by Ezra McGoldrick. Even better by Malonga, but just fell short of the shot. It's been a couple of times where she's just realized she's had a, a bit more time and it's kind of a bit short for her. See, they're 10 points apiece this quarter. It's been a good second half by New Zealand as Hippolyte wants to add some more scoring. West finishes it off. I really like the game of A.B. West. I mean, she didn't score coming into this game, but she's had some really nice looks and been able to finish. Oh, 
PSG is rebounding. She's working hard. That's the main thing. Place for the Oakland Wolves in the British Basketball League is Amy West. Seven points and four rebounds are average at that level. Hippolyte looking for someone to go with her. She just had to pass it off, but Michelle Booty was right there with her. And Repair has got nothing but the ring ahead of her. Hippolyte looking to run a play. France well on their way to hitting the ton. Hitting 100 points in the game, perhaps. They've scored over 80 in four of their six, in six, I should say, of their Olympic qualifying tournament games. You have to say, France have not led up from the opening tip-off to two minutes left in this game. They have still been up and in putting pressure on, making it difficult for the young New Zealand team to make any sort of good passes, good ball movement. Bernays so back into the game. Camilo came in for New Zealand. And an offensive foul on Malonga. Ninety-two plays thirty-nine. Two minutes left in this game. And France could well and truly celebrate. Heading to Paris in front of their home fans for an Olympic Games in July. Tamilo. Couldn't quite knock it down. Some strong words from Coach Guy Malloy on the sidelines there. Didn't quite like that shot choice from Victoria Tamila, it's safe to be said. Oh, but that pass from Repair is delightful. Oh, they've run that play a few times, and Malanga hasn't finished a couple of times. It's a great play to get her open. Whitaker just loses it, and Berlays to Duchesne, the two point guards combining. And I guess that's something new that they're trying, Laurie. We haven't often seen Bernays and Duchesne on the floor at the same time. No, this is the first time, really. They, they're they normally subbing in for each other, or if Fatux is in the rotation as well. A minute left. And then New Zealand will head back home and still has to wait for another Olympics berth. They've been to three Olympics in their history. Their last was 2008. Tamilo still can't quite get the shot choice right. Here's Duchesne to repair into Duchesne. Bernays now. Salon. Malonga, they're just so patient with it, France. And this time, Malonga finishes. Last shot of the game, last shot of the tournament for New Zealand. What can 18-year-old Lauren Whitaker produce? McGoldrick, that one falls short. I think they'll be happy to just hold it up. Let the clock roll down here. Alex Duchesne, Repair and Malonga all share some high fives, a re crowd of applause from the crowd. And France get the job done over New Zealand and go into their home Olympics in some serious form. They go three from three here in China. And it's been off the back of some clinical offense, some amazing defense. And the final score is France 94, New Zealand 39. Well, France came here with, with the intent of sending a message and, and working hard, getting Johannes and Williams back into the rotations in the lineup. And here they are now, 3-0 in this tournament.
beating the mighty China team on their home court yesterday, having great wins against New Zealand today and Puerto Rico earlier in the tournament. Now the celebrations can really open up here for France. You see a nice little boarding pass on the court. Confirmation that they have earned their qualification. They knew that going into the tournament they had already qualified, but for them to go three from three and finish at the top of the standings here in Xi'an is a credit to jean Tupan Tupin and his team. And they deserve to have smiles on their faces. They are bound for Paris. It'll be such a spectacle in front of their home fans. They have qualified well and truly for the Paris 24, 24 Olympic Games. A bit more subdued compared to Puerto well, Rico last night. But it is, but I think they're, they're smiling for different reasons. Like you say, they had already qualified. They could have come in and, and you know, just sort of taken the, that, that, that fact for granted, but they did the exact opposite, the other extreme. And the defense that they played, the team offense that they played, um, they'll go home a very, very happy group. Final stats from the game. It's a nice color, French theme nail polish there as well. They're all about playing for their country, but that just paints the picture of a dominant French performance. Well, 30 assists says it all, the type of team basketball. And, and look how well they took care of the, um, the basketball. Three players in double figures, Williams 21, Malonga 13, and Repair with 10. For New Zealand, it was just the one, Ezra McGoldrick in double figures. And she's had double figure points in every game she's played, Ezra McGoldrick, so a credit to her, she's kept fighting. And it's unfortunate for this New Zealand team, they would have liked a better result out of this tournament. But they can hold their heads up high, that's for sure. Again, we said once they uh, once they reflect on that Puerto Rico game, they'll realize how well they've actually, you know, played at this tournament overall. And it's not the time to think about it right now, but at some stage they will. For now, let's recognize the good work of the French team. This is the best players from the fourth quarter. Of course, the scintillator go for the calf. They had 61 points at half time. But only just outscored New Zealand 14 points to 12. It was a nice even battle in that period. Well, there was lots of different ways. They still were looking for their perimeter shot from outside, but really it was interior. That was a nice, nice roll by Tamil, a nice pass by, by her captain, Stella Beck. And we didn't see a lot of that, so we have to celebrate when that does happen. And uh, Guy Malloy would be... Look thrilled. Said, yeah, well, some of those things are... are you know, he'll be happy with when he, if he watches the games back. I'm sure he will. I'm sure his plane ride back home will be full of tape and full of vision. And equally for jean Tupan, Tupin, he'd have a smile on his face watching what his team produce. I seriously can't pick a fault in their game. It's been a flawless tournament for them. See there, Guy Malloy, happy to reward where he can. Amy West had some nice moments. Stella Beck led this team brilliantly throughout the tournament. Of course, highlighted by a signature effort last night by, with 21 points, 8 rebounds and 5 assists against Puerto Rico. Today with the 5 points and 4 assists and 2 rebounds. She will definitely hit the bed and be yes. happy to relax. <laughs> yes. Goldrick showed some good, good signs, like I mentioned, double figures in all three of her games this tournament. Hippolyte has to try hard in that makeshift point guard position. And Michelle Goody. She came in, and, and that was just an example there of the passing. Get it up in the air. And the bigs don't bring it down, they keep it up and then are able to finish. It's just, it's really good fundamentals when it comes to your passing. 
Everyone got involved, even though Malonga did miss a few shots. Got in double figures with the 13 points and three rebounds. And no surprise to see Gabby Williams smiling. She led the scoring tonight with 21 points, 10 from 13 from the field, and three rebounds. And the two assists as well, if you don't mind you. So confirmation, that's how the standings look. France on top, three wins. China one on one, Puerto Rico one on one, New Zealand yet to win. Of course, they came up short, 39 to 94 tonight. Up next, though, Puerto Rico and China, 7 o'clock local time. Both teams are qualified for the 2024 Paris Olympics. So a chance to end this tournament on a high note for those two teams. But that's the end of proceedings here at Shanxi Provincial Gymnasium. It was France getting the win over New Zealand, 94 to 39.